Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. One of the best things we can do for the environment, our land, and our water is to keep our soils healthy. That's why there's research that specifically targets what's in the ground. Some of the best research employs new technologies, techniques, and ideas from around the globe. Recently, an innovative idea made its way to the Northeast. It's an idea that scientists at the University of Vermont are putting to the test. The UVM scientists are inviting others to learn more about it by seeing it in action. Rebecca Gollan has our story. Farmers in Vermont have used compost to increase the nutrients in their soil for many years. Now, there's a new method of producing compost that researchers in the state are taking a look at. It's a cold compost process. It's an unturned and it's a quiet compost process, so you don't, you, you don't, you don't have to turn so it doesn't heat up. Juan Alves is a pasture and soil health expert with the University of Vermont's Center for Sustainable Agriculture. He's talking about the Johnson Sioux method of composting, which began in New Mexico and shows a lot of promise. On this day, Alves is hosting a workshop to share more about the technique. The Johnson Sioux composting method is very low maintenance. It requires a little bit of assembling in at the beginning, uh, where you, you just need a pallet, barbed wire, and some pipes to put in the middle. Once the apparatus is loaded with material, it's left to sit for about a year. At the end of that time, there's compost ready to use. Being a cold compost means that the pile doesn't need the same kind of maintenance as traditional compost. The normal composting uh, requires multiple turnings, you know, to digest all the materials, to digest all the carbon, to um, to break pathogen cycles, to you know, you know, break all the anaerobic bac bacteria, and you go through a series of you know, heat, turn, heat, turn, basically, um, until it it becomes like a mature product. You know, that's, that's the typical compost um, uh, process. The Johnson Sioux process, you add all the materials, wet materials, uh, they, they could be uh, leafy greens, they could be uh, fall leaves, uh, even manure and some food scraps. Pipes are placed in the structure to allow space for oxygen to circulate which activates a host of different microorganisms and fungi than other types of compost. Here at the Center for Technology in Essex, they built a couple of the Johnson Sioux bins, or bioreactors, about a year ago. It was interesting to try something new. Forestry and horticulture instructor Brian Jaff was up for trying out the technique. When Alves contacted him with the idea, Jaff got his students involved. It tied in really nicely to our machinery operation and some of the community service at this time of year doing yard cleanup that we do in the center. This was, oh, these were all done exactly a year ago. Okay. And we just opened them yesterday. Excellent. Looks great. So when you open them... Jeff and his colleagues recently opened the bins they made last year to see the results. They didn't know what to expect. In one year, there was a 50% reduction in the volume of the materials that we put into the reactor. So it dropped by half. And when we opened them up and started using that material, it was really visibly, to the naked eye, dense in fungi. And we actually had to physically break it up. It was like a compact nugget of, of compost. And I've been working with compost for about 20 years of various kinds. And I've learned a lot from my mistakes and others. Kat Buxton is a consultant for soil health and composting in Sharon. She also manages several school gardens. I am very interested in fungal dominated compost, knowing that most of the compost we create is generally bacterial dominated. And in order to have healthy soil, we want to have a nice ratio of fungal to bacterial and large diversity. With upcoming changes to Vermont's universal recycling laws, it's increasingly important for schools businesses and towns to think about how they deal with their waste. People generally don't know how to manage their their yard waste or their food waste um, and and the two can work well together but depending on where you live in Vermont you have more yard waste than you produce food waste. 
Buxton researched the Johnson Sioux method and came to the workshop to see it in action. I learned that this is really doable. Um, it's everything that I saw on the YouTube videos. It's very accessible, it's very affordable. It can freeze through the winter, which was one of my concerns. How is it gonna to react to our region? And I saw some great compost back there. So um, I learned that it's possible and accessible and I'm excited. I've always been interested in compost. Uh, I have a food service background, so there's always food, scraps, waste, things that are a part of it. Mark Burns is a master gardener and composter and works with an elementary school in Addison County. He came to the workshop looking for new ways to deal with the school's compostables. Just learn about how that system works, just in terms of the microbes that are involved with it. It's a different system than hot composting. And then we also learned how to physically put one of these things together, uh, starting off with a pallet and, and using the, the wire and, uh, and actually loading some of the bins up. After seeing how to put together the bins and what the compost looks like when it comes out, the process seems to have won over some of today's participants. For me, user-friendly is, is something that things need to be. And I think all in all, once you get these uh, frames built for this type of system and they are reusable, yeah, I think it'll, I think it'll work cool. I, I would definitely do it. <laughs> yeah, do you think you will? Absolutely. Some attendees will go home and try the technique. Some have a head start. So I'm experimenting with different versions and all that, uh, just, you know, in my backyard. Jim Stiles is passionate about soil health. He tried a version of the Johnson Sioux that was not as successful as he wanted. But he's hopeful that his next one will be. I've accomplished some of the same things as a, uh, as with a Johnson Sioux reactor, but with a different configuration that has some other advantages. And But hopefully in a year from now, we will see how my results differ from the results here because I've done some things differently. And that's, it's all part of that learning process. And that learning process is ongoing. The compost produced here in Essex is part of an experiment that compares a number of different composting techniques. UVM's Juan Alves is overseeing that larger project. And though he doesn't have all of the results yet, what he has seen from the Johnson Sioux method is encouraging. When, when you teach about something and you want to change, anything you want people to you know, adopt has to be at least equal, if not better, than the previous uh, technology. So I thought these had the potential because of the amount of living microorganisms. Um, Johnson Sioux um, scored like one of the best composts, you know, across the eight different other composts. Alves's study will look at the economic value of compost as well as the nutrient value of the different methods. And while he can't say for sure until he has those final results, for now, Johnson Sioux seems to be a simple, low-cost, low-maintenance process that can be done in a backyard or school with a high rate of success. And that's just the kind of solution these soil enthusiasts are hoping for. In Essex, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. Of course, all kinds of ways you can use your finished compost. And the home garden is one of its most popular uses. And of course, gardening is never out of season. Between planning and planting and the weeding and the watering, there's always something going on in the garden. Author Carrie Ann Mendez has compiled a series of top 10 lists ranging from design tips to smart plant picks. Mendez sat down with UVM horticulturalist Leonard Perry to talk about the top 10s. Here in Extension, we're lucky to have many authors uh, that we can take advantage of in our programs and uh, get to know, uh, like my friend, Carrie Mendes, who's with us today. Thank you so much for being here, Carrie. Thank you. It's great. It's and great. what I'd like to look at here is, I guess this was your first book you came out with, yeah. of several you have now, and this is a Flower Gardener's Top Ten List. Tell us what those lists are about. This book, I wanted to embrace everything from what are great plants in sun to shade and all different groups of plants, you know, your perennials, annuals, shrubs, uh, small trees, 
But the other half of this book, I wanted to talk about good, organic, sustainable practices for caring for our gardens. You know, the best ways to water your gardens, how to weed your gardens, um, how to keep Bambi and Thumper, you know, deer and rabbit off your plants. Um, so talking about good garden care practices, working with workhorse plants, and also what to do when in the gardens so that your gardens really are in their best shape year round. I mean, talking about what you do in January, even in different things that would be time well, time well spent for. So those would be like a list, uh, ten things exactly. to do in January or whatever. Exactly. Because right, you have seventy lists in here. It looks like yeah, it sounds like a, a lot, but there's a lot of topics there too to cover. Mm -hmm. And it's not just those plants. It's a garden practice, like you say, as well as plants. And right. I know you have some color photos of plants here, yep. but a lot of it's just like like you are, like you know. Let's just get right to the chase here, and let's yeah. you know here are the things to do, you know, yeah. and just some real good take home tips, easy to read, and um, so. Um, One so of the things have, I have yeah. to just say, because talking about easy to read, I, oh, I get so many comments about my book, especially this one, that it's so humorous. They just chuckle. I mean, they feel like they're reading something that's fun and laughing as they're reading some of my things about the chipmunks or whatever. And I wanted to spin a lot of humor. We want to have nice gardens. We want to enjoy it. We want to make good choices. Well, I think, you know, that's that's part of you and, you know, and just having, and like you say, you've got to have fun gardening yeah. and not get too carried away with it or get, get too uptight about it. And also, you are a gardener. You do a lot of this stuff yourself. You have your gardens pictured. Yeah. And so you're writing from real first-hand experience, which I think is very viable. Too. Yeah. I'm a self-taught gardener. I've learned from great people like yourselves and others. I've come up through the, through the ranks with a lot of dirt under the nails and learned from... Successes well, I think that's one of the failures. best ways. And, uh, so thank you so much for sharing all these tips. I look forward to looking through a lot of these. And I uh, hope the viewers can too. And thank you so much for watching today on Across the Fence for University of Vermont Extension. I'm Leonard Perry. Our thanks to garden author Carrie Ann Mendez for taking the time to share her knowledge. And once again, thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard.